Set my feet down on the floor Take a deep breath and put on my day I'm ready for whatever comes my way No second guessing cause I'm sure I'm gonna get it right this time Okay, so here we are in the my studio. Um, you can see there's a little bit of work on the go at the moment, which eventually we'll talk about. We've got some Romans at the back here. Uh, we've got some Germans here. But these are the boys that we're interested in right now. These are Warlord 28mm US Infantry. You get in a box 25 figures. We can make those up in a whole variety of ways, which is great, because they come with different weapons, we can put bazookas onto them, we can turn them into sniper teams, NCOs, even make them into officers. So you get a lot in the box to start with. Including the box is this handy little sheet, which gives us a nice little description about the units and the different weapons. There's a little bit of that, a bit of the overall background. And each of the parts then is described in a list in there and all given uh, a letter. On the other side, we've got the, the bodies, the backpacks, so on, and the arms. Now, that's what's really important with these models. For example, we might want to put one of our models with R, which is the Thompson submachine gun. We have to make sure on this side we get the right arms. So 21 and 22 gives us the Thompson SMG firing arms and the uh, Thompson SMG aiming arms. It's I've had these before and tried to put them again without the instructions and it was just a nightmare to be honest with you. I was given some sample ones right at the beginning. So we'll tell you now the right arms, the right weapons, very, very important as you can imagine. Otherwise you're just going to be there all night. So the guys that we've actually done, the majority of these are done as basic riflemen. So we've got a basic pose with them, the rifles, uh, they've got the backpacks at the back and a little bit of webbing. We've got a few guys who've got the BAR, if I can find one there. So we've got a guy there, all prone refraction, with his BAR. Very nice. Kill some Germans. Better I did that one off. Right, and then on this side, uh, we've got a few we've done as NCOs as well. So they've got a Thompson machine gun, and there's a little bit of posing, holding up the troops, and whatever else. So, again, like we say, we're looking for a very straightforward simple painting technique that gets troops really quite important is, is to get them onto the table and to be fighting and that's what we're going to try and do today we're going to start with a very basic white undercoat uh, which is where we're going to take these guys now so we'll get this spray painted and we'll get back to you and go through the main painting technique I'll see you in a second right so we're back again the figures have now been spray painted white. And I'll give you a quick tip about the spray painting. It's January the 20th, it's absolutely freezing outside. So a good way to do this uh, is to give it to your wife and let her take <laughs> it outside. Yes, there's a little bit of a chuckle in the background there. So I don't do spray painting because I am absolutely terrible at it. My wife always tells me that. I tend to miss all the bottom end of it. So get your family involved, get one of them out there spray painting. So that's my tip for today. Paints. We're going to use army paint and wall paints because we are just going to do a very quick kind of paint scheme and then we're going to do a colour wash over the top of that and get them based up. So we're using, basically we're going to use the toning ink, we've got strong and dark tone ink there. Army green, which is going to be for most of the jackets. 
Then we've got the Munster Brown, which is for the leggings. We've got the Flesh Tone there, basic faces. Skellington for the, the gaiters and the backpacks. Angel Green, which we use on the, the helmets. And the Oak Brown, which is going to be for the rifles. Again, this is not about trying to do a detailed paint job. Uh, you, you can do that. The main thing with this is that, like I said, we want to get this on the battlefield. And if you get the model in your hand, hold that kind of distance. That's probably about as much as you're ever going to see of the thing anyway. So, let's make a start. The next thing to consider is how the model's actually made. We normally want to start with the, the lowest point. In this case, I'm going to start with the jackets. And the reason I'm going to do that is that there's more chance of me hitting another part of the model as I, as I paint them. So if I start there, if I make a mistake, I can quickly rectify that. So here goes. A little bit of my paint. And some water. It's a bit thin at the moment. So, and you'll notice I've actually got at this stage quite a large brush. One of the things I'm absolutely terrible for is painting all over my hands. It's not a good technique, I wouldn't recommend it, but I do it all the time. So. All we're looking for is just good, even coverage all the way over. So we don't even have to be too careful because if we start from the lowest colour, as we said, and work our way up, we then get the chance to rectify any problems. And that's the point of your speed painting. In other words, you're just looking for that tabletop standard just to get them onto the field and start playing your games. And so if we start from the bottom, we'll make a problem, make a mistake, we can go back over. Okay, so, like I say, working our way around. And getting a good level of coverage. Now, I've just said it off, but I just had a phone call and I can't remember what the hell we were just talking about. But anyway, we'll move on. I mean, the thing with this colour as well, it's very easy to work with, it's very loose. Um, goes on quite nicely. Um, for the kind of finish that we're looking for, for these guys, it works pretty well. Again, another guy. Working from those deep recesses. Working your way up and around. Whoops. Model. I mean, this is the first video that we've done. And uh, it's quite surprising you have taken into account. I didn't realise how much your hands actually get in the way. But I suppose, like everything else, you learn as you go along. There we go. Cover 
of those shirts. I suppose the idea is also that when these guys are fighting, I kind of imagine them being in the battlefield. They seem to be quite dirty and mucky and whatever else. So I don't think it. Once they've had their colour washes over them. Kind of works quite nicely. Right, I think we'll finish this last one off and then I'll stop the camera. Because otherwise you're just going to hear me start waffling about an absolute rubbish. And we'll come back to it when all the, the jackets are done. Okay, catch you in a moment. Right, <clears throat> as you can see now, all the guys have got their jackets painted up. Taken around about 15 20 minutes to get those jackets done. There's quite a bit of space on that. So, the next section is going to be the trousers, and for those, we are going to use the all paints, the Munster Brown. So, again, exactly the same technique again. Not got to be too careful about this. Plenty of paint on your brush. Working your way along. The only thing we're looking to, to miss, because we don't really want to be going over them too much, is the gaiters on the boots. Getting a little bit easier this one now, because very straightforward shape to follow. We've got plenty of paint on those undersides. Around the back. Okay. Just gonna, we don't want too much of that white coming through. I mean, don't get too worried about if the white does come through. Um, <clears throat> it sometimes has this great way once you put a color wash over the top with the, with the dark tone inks, once they go on, they can kind of look like they're a bit faded and a bit washed out. And at the end of the day, 28mm painting there's a lot to do with getting depth of colour or shades of colour and that's really all we're looking for in a lot of models you see we're working Reasonably quickly, all around the areas. The only thing we don't want to do is find any large sections of paint that's been missed. I do quite like these guys though. You 
kind of for me they take me back um, probably more when I was a young kind of lad playing with the Airfix models the um, on my mum mum's front room floor with my best mate and hundreds and hundreds of figures and throwing marbles at each other and sometimes she's throwing at the models yeah. I would recommend though if you're batch painting it normally helps if you've got a little bit of something to distract you I know some people like to watch videos or a bit of music. I mean these with only 20 figures, they're not too bad. So you can quite easily sit down in an afternoon and get these knocked off. But when you've got hundreds, <laughs> well, That's when it gets painful. And the next one. Gone too far with that one, gone slightly down the putties there, miss misjudged that one. But like I say the thing is starting with those lower colours doesn't cause us too much of an issue. Okay, uh we'll stop the camera there and we'll come back to this once we've got all of the leggings done. And we'll see how we're going on for time. Okay, I'll see you in a moment. Right, so that's all the guys now who've got the jackets done and they've got the trousers done. The next colour we're going to use is the oak brown. The reason we're going to use the oak brown next is because the right, like we said before, we always go for the lowest colour. So the rifle is below the hands and then the boots are, you can see that very well, the boots are actually below the putty line of the gaiters. So they'll now be done next. Just to give you an idea of time scale, we're doing these guys. We've gone through, I mean, these are only just the, the, really the base colours or the prime colour of it, but um, we've got through most of it now. I think we're into about 45 minutes for 20 troops. So. I think we're going to try and aim to get the whole thing finished in round about two, two and a half hours. Maybe a little bit sooner. There's been one or two little misdemeanors as you go, but we don't worry about that. Not at this stage. I'm ever so sorry, I do keep putting my hands in the way. I will try and improve on that.
I've been very liberal with that colour. Okay, nice. Even flow. It's good. basically just so on and so forth as you can see okay I'll stop the camera again and we'll get those finished off and then we'll get back to you with the next colour right we jumped a few stages here um, we got the the coats the, the jackets and the trousers done as we said and after that we use the um, <coughs> the monster brown which, no we didn't, where's it gone, lose my colours, the oak brown, which we did on the weapons and the boots, we then used uh, the barbarian flesh, uh, just to highlight, sorry, just to paint onto the faces and the hands, and the skeleton bone, we use that for the gaiters and the webbing and the bat packs. The final part was the angel green, which we used on the helmet. I then added another couple of colours. I've used GW's lead belcher for a little bit of highlight on the gun at the moment, and we also did the rat skin earth on uh, so the rat skin flesh on a few guys who got these. Uh, entrenching tools and knives and bits and pieces, so just to highlight that. We're just going to wait for those to dry and then I'm going to add the Strong Tone ink. So we'll have that all over to the model there and then let that dry and we'll talk you through the final processes. Okay. So here we are with the last three guys and I'm just going to show you about using these tone inks. You can be very very liberal with these. Um, basically what they're going to do it's an all over wash and it will settle itself out so you don't need to worry about how much you're applying at the time. <coughs> Again just give your model a nice wash all over basically what it'll do, it'll give it a dark shade right across the model so you don't have to worry about the individual inks or things like that as you can see we're not exactly being shy with the wash but we are trying to get it in all the little recesses and crevices. Again, it's a very quick and easy technique to use. Almost done with that one. Okay, that's 20 guys all with the wash. This one's not quite dry yet, but you get the idea of the effect as it's starting to dry out. almost in places looks like it's been toned. Anyway, 
we'll let that fully dry and we'll talk about the last few stages. Okay, the model's almost dry now, uh, most of them are. There's, we could leave them at that stage if we really wanted to. Um, personally, I do think they look better with a bit of highlighting. Now, there's a very, very easy way to do this. Because the dark tone wash has made everything, well, basically dark, it means we can use the original colour as the highlight. So, for example, we put the army green onto the jacket. If we use the army green again, we strengthen up the colour. I mean, literally, we are just dry brushing this on. I'm not sure the camera will get the full idea of that. But each of the parts we can just go over with its original colour as a highlight. The only one I tend to not do that with is the helmets, because for some reason they tend to, once you put the, um, the, the green on there, the angel green, and then put the dark colour, they do have a nice little tone about them, which you'll find. So I tend to leave those as they are. Like I say, the rest of the colours, again, just re-add those colours, but this time very lightly, more or less a dry brush, and they work very nicely as a highlight. Okay, I'm going to get on with those, and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay, everybody's now had a bit of highlight on the model. The final part. Using a little bit of the bleach bone, it's the only one that didn't get a highlight in the bleach bone cover. Um, the skeleton bone, sorry. Um, <clears throat> take a large dry brush and make sure there is, I mean, you want just the absolute dusting of uh, colour on there. And literally, you can start with the backpacks, because that's the same colour in it. Just give the whole model a quick dry brush. It'll just help to pick out those final highlights. I mean, the main thing about selecting your palette anyway is that the, the, well, basically the more colours that you add into it, the longer it takes. So this way, we're kind of using the same colours that we already started with to our highlights, keeps the expense down, and generally makes a whole lot job a lot easier. And there we go, uh, US soldiers ready for combat. We'll do a final video to talk about the basin, and I'll probably put a bit of pictures up as well, so you can actually see in a little bit more detail how the finished product looks. But that's it. So 20 guys taken round about, start to finish around about two hours. So. Please let me know what you think. Okay, thanks for watching.